12 minutes after 5 o'clock right now. It's March 16th. means you have less than a month to get those taxes done. This morning, some free advice from the people at AOL's personal finance site, Wallet Pop, and Andrea Chlupa is the editor, and she joins us this morning. Andrea, good morning. Good morning. First off, the tax code has had lots of changes since last year. Give us some examples about uh, some adjustments that people might feel this year. Sure. Well, the tax code is always changing, but the changes that are fun that you want, really want to pay attention to are coming out of the Recovery Act. For instance, uh, we got a little tax benefit in the form of students. If you're, if you're in school or, or going to a trade school, you can deduct up to $2,500 in expenses. And that includes, of course, for books, for tuition, uh, for a computer, if you're going to use it for school. And um, some more little fun little tax benefits for us coming out of the Recovery Act also include uh, making your home more energy efficient. You can deduct up to $1,500 there. Okay. Any other things that uh, the taxpayers can write off that they never knew they could or, or should? Yeah, absolutely. So the rule of thumb when it comes to deducting expenses for your work, um, you can do it as long as you're not already getting reimbursed for it from your employer, then that would be double dipping of course. And um, so one great case to keep in mind uh, when it comes to you, what you can deduct, if it helps you earn income, you can write it off. So that's everything from uh, meals, meals with like a potential client or, you know, for a networking event, uh, classes, if it's directly for your career and to help you earn income, you can, you can definitely deduct classes and books as well. And if you have a home office space that you use, if you have a little, a, a place, either like a den or um, a corner of a desk set up, a computer little, little cubby hole there, you can deduct that as well. For sure, you have to just calculate the square footage if you use it primarily for work. All right, keep those receipts handy, I guess. That's the key, huh? Always. always. All right. This time of year, we see lots of ads about refund anticipation loans. You're not a big fan of those. They are the worst thing ever. Basically, what a refund anticipation loan is, is if, if you anticipate to get money back from the government, you take out a loan because it, you're basically paying for rushed cash. And what happens if you don't get a refund? Then you're stuck paying, you know, you're paying up to 115% interest on average. So those things are the absolute worst, and so stay away from them. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We've heard that from a lot of yeah. people before. What about for those who end up owing the IRS money? I know this, this year especially, a lot of those people are going to have a tough time coming up with the payment. Are there, are there uh, any things they can do to help? Absolutely. And this year, the IRS is all about working with you to come up with a payment plan that, make, that makes sense for you. They know that a lot of people are hurting. They know a lot of people are out of work. And so what the IRS has done is, starting on March 27th, they'll be hosting over 1,000 open houses across the country where you can come in and you can work out a payment system with, the, with people from the IRS. And there's actually a section on their website, irs.gov, especially for people who are unemployed and are having trouble paying their tax bill. Excellent advice. Andrea Chalupa from uh, Wallet Pop, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, happy tax day. <laughs> happy tax day. <laughs>